Welcome to Illustrator Lesson 1. We just did Lesson 00. So in this lesson, we're going to explore the Illustrator workspace and learn how to do the following. We're going to open an, an Adobe Illustrator file. We'll work with the toolbar. We'll move the toolbar. We'll work with panels. Reset and save your workspace. You view options to change the display magnification. Pan with the navigator panel. Rotate the canvas view. Navigate multiple artboards and documents and arrange multiple documents. So, here we go. So, in, you'll see right here in Illustrator, you primarily create and work with vector graphics. Sometimes we call them vector shapes or objects. They're made of lines and curves defined by mathematical objects called vectors. You can resize vector graphics to cover the side of a building or use them as social media icon without losing detail or clarity. You know, when you worked in Photoshop, sometimes you got pictures that were kind of pixelated. Vector graphics maintain crisp edges when printed to a postscript printer, saved in a PDF file, or imported into a vector-based graphics application. As a result, Vector graphics are the best choice for artwork like logos that will be used in various sizes and output media. Illustrator allows you to incorporate bitmap images, technically called raster images, made up of rectangular grid of square pixels. Each pixel in the grid has a specific color. And you can see in this image right here, this is an example of a raster image zoomed in portion over here to show the pixels. A grid to the zoomed in part gives you the idea. Pictures you take with your phone camera are considered raster images. Raster images can be created and edited in a program like Photoshop, which you previously did. So in this lesson, you're going to open a document and use that file to begin exploring Illustrator by navigating, zooming, and investigating an Illustrator document in the workspace. So let's go to our uh, click file and then open and then go to your lesson one files and select this L1 start one and open that. What? What? Okay. I don't know why mine was locked or whatever, but I went back and with the off camera, I just opened it this time and it works. So start with this file open and let's go to window and then workspace and reset essentials so everybody should look the same that ensures our workspace which has all the tools and the panels is set to the default settings and we will later reset this to something different so choose view and then fit artboard in window so an artboard is the area that contains the artwork we talked about that in the last little project that we did where we were made some crafty art supplies I'm going to show you this so when Illustrator is launched and a file is open you have the application bar at the top Here's your panels over here, which we talked about. You know your toolbars here, document window, status bars across the bottom. So the application bar across the top by default contains application controls, the workplace switcher, the search and search on Windows. The main menu bar, menu bar appears in line with the application bar. So yours probably looks a little, potentially looks a little different than mine because I'm on a Mac. Some of you are on a Mac and it should look the same. Uh, if you're on a Windows, it may look a little different. Panels help you monitor and modify your work. Certain panels are displayed by default in the panel dock on the right side of the workspace. And you can display any panel by choosing it from the window menu. So when you click window here, you can change any of these here. Toolbar contains tools for creating and editing images, artwork and artboard elements, and more. Related tools are grouped together. Document window displays the file you're working on and the status bar across the bottom 
appears down there. It has file information, zooming, and navigation controls. The toolbar on the left side of the workspace contains tools for selecting, drawing, painting, editing, and viewing, as well as the fill and stroke boxes, drawing modes, and screen modes. As you work through the lessons, you'll learn about the specific function of many of these tools. So move the pointer over the selection tool. There's your selection tool at the top. If you notice selection tool and V is the shortcut, you'll see that in a tip that comes up. In most cases, there's more information about the tool. Click the text starting at $89. Drag it up higher so it's more centered. Oops, undo, command Z. So what in the world am I doing? You'd think I'd never done this before. So drag that up. The selection tool is one you're going to use a lot. It's used for moving, resizing, scaling, and rotating the artwork in your designs. In the toolbar on the left, press and hold the rectangle tool. Select the star tool. Any tool in the toolbar that displays a small triangle over here, you can see these small triangles, that means there's more tools underneath it. So the, to the left of the starting at $89 text, drag to draw a little star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Notice the star you make is probably purple. That's because you selected the text, which was purple, <coughs> before making the star. Whatever, you're, whatever you make next keeps the same color, which is a good thing. When you open a document in Illustrator, you'll see the Properties panel on the right by default. The Property panel displays options you can set for the active document when nothing is selected. It also shows appearance properties for any content you choose. It's a panel you use quite a bit. It, pull, it puts all the most commonly used options in one place. Using the Properties panel, you'll change the color of the star in the poster. So select the selection tool up here. And we're going to look in the properties panel on the right, choose select, deselect, so the star is, not, is no longer selected. At the top of the properties panel, you'll see no selection. See where it says right here, no selection? This is a selection indicator. It's a great place to see what type of content is selected, if any. With nothing selected in the document, the property panel shows the current document properties and program preferences. Click to select the large text vibes in the background. In the properties panel, you should now see appearance options for the selected artworks, which is a group. See, it's indicated by group at the top of the panel. You can change the size, position, color, and much more for the selected artwork. <coughs> Click the colored box, which is purple. In the panel that shows, make sure the swatches option is selected. So here's your color mixer and their swatches. Ours is selected. And then click any color you want. I'm going to choose that one. So any color you want, choose it. Just make sure it's something different. Pressing Escape will hide that panel. In Illustrator, not all available tools are shown in the toolbar by default. As you go through this course, you're going to explore some of those hidden tools. In this section, you'll see how to access a hidden tool so you can use it to make a particular edit. So right here on this toolbar, you see these little dots? <coughs> that edits your toolbar. Look at all those. A menu appears that shows all the available tools. The tools that appear dimmed, which are the ones you can't select, are already in the default toolbar. You can drag any of the remaining tools you see in the menu into the toolbar so you can use them. Move the pointer over a tool in the list that is dimmed, like the selection tool. And when you do that, you will see it outlined in blue on the bar. You see how I move between those two? 
and it shows you that that one is active. If you don't know where something is, when you highlight over it, it will move to where it is. Scroll on the list of tools until you find the knife tool near the bottom. A knife tool. <coughs> You gotta scroll. I wasn't scrolled. There it is. To add it to the pull toolbar, drag it between two tools. And when a blank space appears, release the mouse button. So I'm gonna drag it over here. You see how and you see that you have the green plus? Let it go, and my knife tool is now in there. So press the escape key and all those other things will go away. The knife tool will now be in the toolbar until you remove it or reset the toolbar. Now you'll use the knife tool to cut a shape in the background so you can change the color. Select the selection tool in the toolbar. Click the lighter orange shape behind the starting at $89. Select the knife tool that you just added to the toolbar. Mine is right there. So choose, let's go view and then zoom out so we can see it a little bit better. Drag across the selected shape to cut it into two pieces. So I'm going to click right here and I'm going to drag it down. I didn't do it straight. You know what you would need to do to cut it straight? Probably hold down the shift key. Uh, the cut line is not going to be perfectly straight. That's how the knife tool is supposed to work. Choose select, deselect, so nothing is selected again. Select the selection tool, and then click in the smaller shape again. That little one right there. Go up to the word fill and make sure the swatches is selected and let's see what color let's make it uh, this light yellow there you go something different so you can distinguish where you've done that <laughs> 